Can you actually fit a 535 cubic inch big block Chevy into a late model four wheel drive Silverado? Well, we're gonna find out today because it is motor mount day. We're gonna try to actually get our short block mounted up to that's a 4L60, uh, not the final transmission, but we're gonna get those two mounted together and get it in the chassis. And we actually have some fabrication work to do over here to build a motor mount. Now, the biggest unknown about this whole project right now is the clearance around the oil pan and the front cross member and the front differential. I did this exact 8.1 based big block swap in the two wheel drive Silverado. And obviously on the two wheel drive, there's no big front diff in the way, but I did actually have to relocate a cross member on the two wheel drive. And I'm hoping I can keep that one in place because it is fairly important and it ties the lower suspension pickup points together and it ties the frame together. Um, but it's a pretty big oil pan. This truck was designed around an LS, but you know, LS engines are boring. Everybody does them. So that's why I chose the path less traveled is the big block. But um, I'll tell you guys, this whole big block build is, it's testing my patience because we're in the middle of a rocker arm debacle. We custom ordered a set of extremely expensive rocker arms that took a long time to get here. Um, they didn't fit our cylinder heads, long story short. We're trying to get that solved. I wanted to have the long block complete before we actually put it into the chassis, but uh, we got to do something and we do need to get the fab work done so we can continue on with our frame build. So that's the goal today is to get the engine and transmission mounted up into the frame. So where we left things off with our motor build last, which seems like forever ago now, uh, we basically got the short block done. The crank is all torqued. We got the cam degreed. Um, I haven't fully torqued these yet, so I'm gonna do that. And then I just kind of want to work on getting this thing a little bit better protect. So we'll put the timing cover on, rear main seal, probably some of the freeze plugs, and then we'll temporarily put the oil pan on. Uh, but the oil pan will have to come off because we're going to weld in a few more bungs and things like that. But for the most part, I just kind of want to get this thing a little bit better protected. And since you guys already know that I'm way OCD, of course, the letters are all nice and even. So far, everything I've done is pretty permanent. Um, obviously, there's no oil pump on yet. The oil pan, this is just temporary to keep dust and debris out. Um, eventually, as long as this fits, I am gonna have to do some modification to it. I'm gonna put an extra port in on the uh, passenger side for an oil temperature sensor. We're gonna put our turbo drain in. 
I might put a second turbo drain in this side, just in case. Um, but for now, we just need to make sure this actually fits. And once it fits, we'll do the windage tray, the oil pump, and we'll button the bottom end up. For All right, so the very last thing we gotta to do to get this block kind of protected is install the rear main seal. Now, this is a little bit tricky on an 8.1 because they use a special two-piece or two-half seal. Um, it looks like a regular seal, but there's actually an inner surface that actually presses onto the crankshaft and the outer surface presses into the block. You gotta get the depth just right. And you can use like PVC pipe or something like that, but I just, I figured, what the heck, I'll probably do this more than once. We got two eight ones now. So I bought the special tool. There's the outside half, which has that little register there. The seal actually sits into. And because it's a little bit wider, it'll get the depth spot on, so you can't press it on too far. Um, and then the inner half bolts on the crankshaft like so. The only problem is this kit came with these little screws here to attach to the crankshaft. Uh, these are metric thread, but the aftermarket crank I have in here is standard thread. But luckily, after spending a little bit of time digging through my extra bolt bin, I came up with a longer bolt and a spacer. And that's basically going to allow me to get this thing attached and working hopefully like it should. So, let's get the seal in place. flush against the block. That's all you need. Now one of my favorite things about the 8.1 that not a lot of people actually even know is the fact that the block has two patterns for motor mounts on it. One is the old school small block and big block Chevy. So like, let's say you got an OBS or a square body and you want to dump an 8.1 into it. Uh, the motor mounts from the original small block slash big block will easily bolt on, zero modification required. You get the three bolts right there. Um, it also has 75% of the LS bolt pattern on the side of the block. So if you want to replace your boring, tiny, puny, no torque making LS <laughs> with an 8.1, it is fairly easy. You will need a little bit of uh, modification. And the main difference is, um, so like this mount here, for example, is for an LS. You've got these four bolts kind of in a rectangle. The only difference is this upper left one right here. It's mounted about, I don't know, about an inch further out. Um, you can modify your stock mounts to fit. I did that on the Ugly Truck version one. This time we're using the Atomic Fab urethane motor mount kits just because they're a little bit more rigid. Um, the half ton Silverado 5.3 frame side mount will um, work fine here on this side. The passenger side will need to be modified ahead a little bit. And then back here, because we have a 4L60 just for mock-up, we have a 4L60 cross member and transmission mount. That'll work again with no modifications. The only question we have is, will that big old oil pan actually fit around this front differential? I'm gonna have to do just a little bit of clearancing down here. 
just because there's a little slight difference on this aftermarket block. But not a big deal at all. So one more thing I noticed, if I wanted to be really overkill, I could actually drill this hole out here for five. Doesn't really need it, but it's an option. should run this 4L60 behind the big block just to see how long it'll last. Like this actually held up really, really well behind my uh, LSA Supercharge 4.8. So who knows, it might last forever. All right guys, this is kind of like a good news, bad news situation, but instead of saying bad news, I am going to say we have an opportunity to make something better, which actually means more work. However, I am excited about it because it means I get to fix a problem that I've been chasing for an extremely long time. Uh, anyway, the good news is that we have the engine sitting in the chassis and I took some measurements to compare it against the ugly truck outside and the engine is actually in pretty much the same exact position in that frame as it is in this frame, which is good news. Sort of. Um, the problem that I've been chasing though has to do with the angle of the drive shaft. Basically, uh, you know, these engines and transmissions normally point downhill a little bit. Um, but since I've lowered the truck, the rear axle is up quite a bit higher than it was before. So there's always been a really harsh angle on the U-joint as it comes out of the back of the transmission. You know, power comes downhill and it has to make a sharp turn uphill to get to the differential. That's a, a bit exaggerated, but you get the picture. Um, I think, I could be wrong, but I think the way I installed this engine using LS mounts in the LS chassis on the big block, I think it actually raised the front end up a little bit more than it would be as if this were an LS. So do me a favor, if you have a GMT 800 truck with an LS under the hood, um, if, if it's not too much of a pain, let me know down in the comments. I wanna know the relationship of the crankshaft center line to the top of the frame. So we just got a straight edge across there. And as you can see for me, the crank center line is just a touch over the top of the frame. But I suspect on an LS, it might be just a little bit lower. Um, so let me know that, but even if that's not the case, I am going to lower the front of this engine by probably an inch and a half, maybe two inches, because we have a ton of room underneath. I'll show you that in just a second. But by lowering the front of the engine and leaving the back where it is, that's gonna fix a lot of problems. That's going to improve the angle of this U-joint here. Um, it's gonna improve the angle of that U-joint there going into the front diff, um, as well as the one leaving the transfer case. So basically, all of our angles are going to be improved and we're not gonna lose any ground clearance, because check it out. Um, where are we at? That's not the best angle to show you, but basically between I think I could show you better on the other side. Um, anyway, I was going to say ground clearance. We get a mile of ground clearance because that cross member there is, I don't know, it's like an inch and a half, two inches away from the oil pan. Um, and the same thing between the diff. We get a mile of room between the diff. The closest spot is on the corner. It's going to be hard to show you. 
Well, basically that bolt right there, that's like the closest spot. So I can get this engine down quite a bit and it's gonna help everything. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm not gonna send it like it is. Um, it's like my mantra, take the opportunity to make it as good as you possibly can because for me anyway, um, we're gonna be pushing this truck hopefully in speeds in excess of 150 miles an hour. Remember, that's our goal. Mid eights in the quarter, 150, 160, maybe 170, who knows, I don't know. Um, but I want the drive shaft angles to be perfect. They're not awful right now. If the truck were at stock height or lifted, this would be fine, but uh, we're gonna fix this, we're gonna make it perfect. And there's pretty much zero compromise other than the fact that <laughs> we got a little bit more work to do. So anyway, uh, we'll get that started next time. It's Friday, it's just after five o'clock for me now. I've gotta go to the store and figure out some materials. I don't have a whole lot of steel on hand right now. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is modify the engine side of the mount. I'll do this a little bit differently because I don't really want to get into this stuff, but I don't know, we'll, we'll figure it out. Not a huge deal. I'm excited because this truck is coming together. This is like a big milestone, guys. The engine and the chassis for the first time, even though we don't have the heads or the valve train on, I'm still pumped. So thank you guys for watching. Come back soon. If you want to learn more about the A1 swap that I did before, go check out this ancient video. Uh, you might get a kick out of it.